I'm Dr. Mark Vesely. You know, as a cardiologist, I talk to a lot of patients about their heart disease and the different complexities of the heart, the structures of the heart, and the functions of the heart. That can get very confusing. So many times I will use the analogy of a house, like we're standing in here, uh, because many of the structures and functions of the house are very similar to the heart. You have the walls that make up the chambers or the rooms of the heart in the house. You have plumbing systems and electrical systems. The walls of the house or the walls of an individual room are very similar to the walls of the chambers of the heart. You need to go from one chamber to the next chamber. Blood is gonna have to flow through the heart as its job is to pump blood from it and out to the body. In order for the blood to move again from one room or one chamber to the next, it has to go through a little valve here. And the valve has been very similar to a doorway. So if I'm a, a drop of blood standing here in this top chamber and I need to get to the bottom chamber, all we have to do is open the door walk through the door, it then closes, and I, as a drop of blood, have moved from the top chamber down to a bottom chamber of the heart. So the heart valves are very much like the doorways between the chambers of the room, and there are some very common issues or problems that people will develop with these heart valves or doorways. Some common things that you might hear about are aortic stenosis or mitral regurgitation. Um, aortic valve and the mitral valve are two of the four doorways or valves of the heart, the other two being the tricuspid valve and the pulmonic valve. If you imagine the door not opening very well, so the blood has to get through from one room to the next, but if the door has gotten heavy uh, or for whatever reason isn't opening well, and you only have that much room to squeak through rather than opening completely, that's what we mean when we say stenosis. It's just a restriction of that opening of the valve to allow blood to course from one to the other. Regurgitation is a little bit of the opposite. Uh, it has nothing to do with how well it opens, but it's more about when it closes. You know, the valve, Christian, you know, the heart, as its job to pump blood out to the body, doesn't really want to be pushing blood backwards. So if this doorway doesn't close well, and now I'm in the bottom chamber, and this chamber squeezes, and another valve opens so I can escape out to the body, but this door has been left open a little bit, when I get pushed to move, I'm going to go out that doorway just as much as I might go out the way I'm supposed to go. And that is a leak of the valve called regurgitation. The heart has a specialized plumbing system as well. We know that the heart's main job is to pump blood out to the body so that the chambers of the heart are all filled with blood. But if you think again that the walls of these chambers are made up of muscle that are living and they need the oxygen and the nutrients that the blood delivers, Unfortunately, even though the heart chambers are filled with blood, that oxygen and other nutrients don't really transmit through that thick muscle very well. So the heart needs its own specialized plumbing system as well. And these blood vessels, which feed the heart, are called the coronary arteries, which actually live up on top of the heart muscle. And then they send very small little branches down into the muscle to feed it and get that local delivery. These coronary arteries are the specialized plumbing system of the heart. And I like to use the kitchen sink pipe as um, a good corollary or analogy uh, for these arteries. If you imagine the bacon grease or uh, other stuff that gets thrown down the kitchen sink pipe over the years, over time we all know that that stuff builds up inside those blood vessels. And if it builds up enough, or it builds up in enough inside this kitchen sink pipe, you'll notice that the, the sink may not drain as quickly as it used to. That's the same thing that happens on the inside of these blood vessels. Over time, toxins from smoke, high cholesterol, things like that, build up on the inside of these blood vessels, clogging those vessels up and decrease the amount of blood that can flow through them. In fact, the uh, common mechanism of a heart attack is for an acute closure of one of these coronary arteries or blood vessels by a blood clot that forms inside that. So if you look at the kitchen sink pipe and you know you've got a clog that has formed in there, there is no uh, drainage at all of the sink. Same thing happens in these blood vessels. If you've got a blood clot that's formed, no blood gets past that. This patch of muscle that is fed by that blood vessel is no longer getting the oxygen and nutrients from the blood, and then that heart muscle will start to die away. That's the common mechanism of a heart attack. If unfortunately something like that's happening and you come into the hospital, one of the things that we'll do very quickly is move you into the cardiac cath lab for a procedure called a cardiac catheterization where we will actively go in and try to get that blood clot out of there and treat that blockage. So very similar to calling your regular plumber to unplug a drain in the kitchen sink pipe, we in the hospital will unplug those arteries and turn that heart attack around. Behind me is an electrical panel which 
uh, as you may know, brings the electricity from the outside world uh, as a central point to the house, and then from that, the electricity spreads out to the rest of the house um, through the wires that are in the walls. In the heart, we have a uh, node of tissue called the sinoatrial node that sits up here in the top right chamber. And while it's not absorbing energy and then sending it out, it is an electrical source by itself. It sends out an electrical pulse every second or so. It's as if you're dropping a pebble into a pond and you imagine the wave that spreads out from that. Very similarly, an electrical wave will uh, transmit out of that node of tissue and spread through the muscle of the top chamber of the heart. And it's that electrical current as it spreads through the muscle that triggers that muscle to contract and to beat as a heart. There's another box or electrical circuit uh, center called the atrioventricular node, which sits right about there in the heart. And this electrical current as it comes through the top chamber muscle will then also hit that spot. That then uh, will transmit that signal through down into the bottom chambers of the heart. And if you open up the bottom chamber of the heart here a little bit, you'll see these literal little white markings which are really specialized tissues um, that are set up to conduct that electrical current in a very, very quick way um, to transmit that electrical signal down to this muscle so that the bottom chambers can then squeeze in a coordinated fashion as well. So we've talked about many different problems with the heart and the different structures and functions of the heart. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. You know, there are many different symptoms of heart disease, things such as chest discomfort, uh, chest pain or a, uh, pressure sensation. You might feel short of breath. Sometimes you feel nauseated, get sweaty more than you would expect. Uh, feeling palpitations or fluttering in your heart or even getting dizzy or feeling like you might pass out. And if you feel like any of these symptoms might be going on, please just make sure you see a doctor soon.